Hello, welcome to this practical video on clustering. So in this example, we'll be looking at k-means clustering. So this is where we have a unlabeled data set and we want to be able to identify where there are suspected k number of groups within this data set. So let's look at the Jupyter Notebook and get stuck in. So the first thing we're going to do is import our data science libraries. So we're importing matplotlib, numpy, pandas, and seaborn. Okay, and what we've got to do first is generate some sample data to work with. So for the purpose of this exercise, what we're going to do is generate three clusters of data. So we're going to use the numpy.random dot normal function to do this where this is going to create some normally distributed random noise where we've got a mean value 0 0 a standard deviation 0 0.5 and then the number of random values we want to generate okay so we're specifying 100 values by two values and the reason we're doing that, essentially what we want is 100 random points. So a point has an X and a Y value associated with it, so two values. So essentially this is going to give us 100 X values and 100 Y values that we can use for plotting points in space. Okay, so we're going to do a similar thing for cluster 2. We've just changed our variance slightly. And a similar thing for cluster 3. Again, we just changed the variance slightly again. So we also add a constant to these. So this is just really for positioning these, these three clusters in our space. So here we're going to add a term of 1 to each of the x and y. Here we'll add, say, 1 to the x, 4 to the y. And maybe here we'll add 3.5 to both x and y again. OK. We're then going to stack these together, so combine it all together into one data set. So we're going to use np.vstack to achieve this, where we take these three groups, add it all together in all data. And we're going to plot this as a scatter plot, where we say all of the x values in our data against all of the y values in our data. And we're just going to plot them as black markers on our scatter plot. So there we are, we've got we've got some data scattered about and then we've got to think well what's the value of k well we've we've defined three clusters so we know that in our example that k is going to be three okay so we might know how many clusters we expect um, or we may just need to try different values for k and see what what works um, so there's a few different ways of doing that but here we're just going to say k equals three OK, so let's run that. And then what do we need to do next? We need to essentially create some initialization points, initial centroid points for uh, us to work with. So we've said k is equal to 3. So we want to create three randomized centroid points. So a random value for x, a random value for y. So how do we do that? We've defined this function generate initial points and we've said okay we'll take a value of k in as its input and then we're going to have a for loop where we say for i in range k so essentially this is going to be repeated three times and each time it's repeated what we what do we do we essentially say let's create a random number so np dot random dot random is the function we use that creates a random number between 0 and 1. We multiply that by 4. We add 1 as a constant. Okay, That essentially creates a random number between 1 and 5, which fits well for the data we're working with. So again, we do the same for the y direction as well. That's our variable c, and we can append that to our list centroids. Okay, We do that three times in our for loop, we then assign that list to be a numpy array. 
and we return centroids. So we run that, we get something like this. So here's a numpy array where we've got a point here where we've got an x and a y value. Our second point here where we've got an x and a y. And our third, again, x and a y. So let's plot this data. So here we're going to say, let's plot all of the data that we started with. And then let's plot each of these centroid points. And the important thing here is that we're going to plot the three, three central points separately, where each one is going to be coloured slightly differently. So the first will have the colour red, the second will have the colour green, the third will have the colour blue. Okay, let's look at that. So here's our blue marker, here's our green marker, here's our red marker. And these are just scattered randomly. Okay, so... What happens next? We've got our markers, our three markers, we've got all of our data. And essentially, what happens with this algorithm is that for each data point, we say, okay, how close am I to each of my centroid groups? So for this data point here, how close am I to the blue X? How close am I to the green X? And how close am I to the red X? Okay, and we do that for every single point. And essentially, we then say, well, whichever one I'm is the lowest value, i.e. whichever I'm closest to, that's going to be the group that I assign membership for. So here, this point, we can say, well, it's closest to the blue, so we're going to make that point blue. Here, we might say, well, that is closest to the red, we're going to make that point red. Okay, so how do we do that? So, we've got this function here, find groups. And perhaps the most important bit of this function to flag up is here. So this is gonna go through all of our data and then it's gonna calculate three distances. And as I say, this is the, the distance from the point to each of those three markers we've looked at. How do we do this then? So, essentially, this is where Pythagoras theorem comes in. So if you remember back to calculating the length of the longest side of a triangle, essentially that's calculating a diagonal Euclidean distance, and that's what we're trying to do. So how do we do this? So here we are saying, get me the absolute value between my point, my data point in the X direction and my centroid point. Okay, so my first centroid point, and that's working in the x direction. So once I've got the length in the x direction, I can then raise this to the power 2. I do exactly the same in the y direction, I raise it to the power 2. And then I add those together and I take the square root of that to get the final distance between the data point and the centroid points that I'm checking against. So that's very much a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's what we're trying to do to calculate the distances between each of the three markers. And then we put that into a list. And then here, we're essentially saying, well, which of those values, distance one, two, or three, is the lowest? So this function here, np.argmin distances, will essentially tell me which of those is lowest, which is the lowest value, and what's the index of the lowest value. So rather than giving me the, the actual value of, oh, it's 0 0.5, it's going to give me either 0, 1, or 2, which is the positional data of distance 1, distance 2, distance 3. So if np.argmin distances equals zero, that means essentially that distance one is the, is the smallest, and so this point should be added to group one. Here, if it's uh, argmin distance is equals to one, it means it belongs to group two. If argmin distance is equal to two, it belongs to group three, okay? 
And that's all part of this for loop. So it goes through every single data point calculating this. And then essentially we've got these three NumPy arrays at the end, group one, group two, group three. Okay, here we've got a scatter plot where we're just color coding this RGB so that it corresponds to the marker points. So let's run that and see what happens. So here we are. The marker points are the same as what we started with earlier. So we've got the blue point here, the green point there, the red point there. And we can see for any given point, which color is it, which point is it closest to. So here we can see that point is closest to the blue marker, whereas here, those are closest to the green. And you can actually see this kind of decision boundary between the blue and the green markers there. Likewise, here we can see a decision boundary between the green and the red markers. Okay, so that's great. What do we do next? So next, we need to update our centroids. So thinking about what the algorithm's called, k-means clustering, we now need to think about the mean value for all of our data points. So we need to update our centroid so that it is actually the centroid of the group. Now the centroid essentially is the mean in the x direction and the mean in the y direction to give us the middle value. So whereas these were randomly initialized to start with, now we need them to be positioned at the center of those groups. So how do we do this? So here we say np.mean group one, here we say np.mean group two, and here we say np.mean group three. And what we've done is put those all into an array and cast that to be a NumPy array. Okay, that's actually the same format as the centroids value we showed earlier. So that's great, that works nicely. And we plot our scatter again, where we show the groups. And here now we're gonna plot our markers again, but our markers are gonna update it. Okay, so if they're gonna update, we now see that here's the blue marker, just about. We see here's the green marker, here's the red marker. Okay, so we can actually see how those, those have updated. So that's the first pass of the algorithm, that's great. So now what it does is essentially just keep on doing that process over and over and over again until it stabilizes to a solution. So let's see what happens there. So the second pass of the algorithm, we're gonna do exactly the same thing again. So here, we're just calling the find groups that we started with earlier. We give it our new values for centroids. We give it all of the data again. We're going to plot this using our scatter and we're gonna see what happens, okay? So here now, we've relabeled the data based on the updated mean, the updated centroid point for each group. So now we can start to see there's a slight difference. So if we go back here, we only had a few red points earlier. We had quite a lot of blue points. We've now got much more red and we've got a few less on the blue, okay? So we've calculated new membership for each of these groups. Now let's update our centroids again. So we update the centroids and Again, we can see the red points moved again, the, blue, uh, the greens moved over a bit, and the blues moved further down as well. If we keep going through, we do this again. So again, find groups. And now we can start to see the red group emerging here, the green group emerging there, the blue group emerging there. Update those centroids again. Okay. We might even just do one more pass of this. So to do another pass, let's just copy that down there. Okay. Run that. Okay, that's starting to look like a, a good stable solution. Let's just run it one more time just to check. a 
looking that's looking good okay so here now we seem to have converged nicely so that we've got this group here this green group here this blue group and importantly I mean we could we could actually assess this whether there's any variance or whether there's any change between these okay there is a slight slight change uh, there's this green point here which becomes red eventually here but if we run it again I suspect we're at the point where the solution has converged and we could actually measure this we could actually say well you know how many points are busy changing or what how much change is there in that uh, centroid point for the groups because essentially when when we're at the point where there's no more change with that centroid value that's where we know when we've we've reached our solution so here we are we've found our green group our blue group our red group and that very much does correspond with what we we're expecting when we started we created this first group here this was our second group we created and our third group there so that's the k-means clustering algorithm I hope that's been useful to, to walk through to, to show you how that's working and we'll discuss it more in the labs. Bye for now.